Great. All right. Can everybody see the craft table and hopefully hear us? Um, oh my gosh, I'd just like to start by saying if you can all hear us, please say hello. Hi everybody. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to our new In Stitches family summer schedule. We are going to try this for the foreseeable few months. So throughout the summer we'll be doing a live event here on Mondays and we will have our regular Friday video on Fridays. We're going to see how that goes. Obviously, we have really appreciated all the feedback we've gotten from you all. Thank you all so much. Um, everybody who pitched in at the poll, um, who gave Crystal feedback in the Facebook group, and uh, who've been popping into the Etsy shop and just letting us know what's up. We've really appreciated it. And we are so glad to have you all here. <laughs> we had a couple of technical issues earlier today, so hopefully those have been ironed out. And you can see the little balls on the table, see my hands, and hear me. Mr. Stitches, you want to try your mic? Hello, everyone. We're getting a little bit of feedback that you sound like you're in a tunnel. But uh, we tested everything, and it sounded perfect about five minutes ago. So I'm not sure why that's happening, but um, we'll we'll do our best. Yeah, we we'll see how best. it turns out. It could, it could be just echoing in the room. Very true. Could just be echoing in the room. Um, but that's, uh, we will work on it as we go. As long as you can hear me and you can hear the mister and you can see my hands, that's all that's important. Uh, or I should say that's all that's important. <laughs> um, I just noticed that there was a, a, a membership milestone from Cami who is going to be applying for a job at the thrift store um, they've been working at. I'm just so excited. I hope you get it because I love thrift stores. <laughs> um, I would totally volunteer in one, but getting a job in one would be even better. So I hope that works out for you and welcome to the family. Welcome to our subscribers. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. Let's get into this. We have already made, um, we made our little doll. So this is the little guy that we made during the live crochet along um, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we took a little bit of time off. It's been kind of a, kind of a busy couple of weeks around here, but here we are back. Uh, so we need to put a little face on our guy. I did say during our last live stream that I would try to whip up another doll just so I would have another one uh, available to kind of show a couple of different things. So today we're focusing on facial features. So if you're crocheting along with us, we're making doll faces. I'm gonna explain what we need here in a second. If you're not crocheting along with us, thank you so much for hanging out with us and just put your feet up, grab your work in progress and uh, we'll hang out for an hour. I've got two different kinds of eyes that I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna be doing the baby doll eyes that are like they're asleep or they're happy, which is just a very simple way to make um, a face. And that one is one that we used in our original tutorial. Um, we have that detailed in the uh, Baby Dolls of the World ebook. So we do have that available. We're gonna show that today. I'm also gonna show how to crochet really small little open eyes using embroidery floss or super fine weight yarn. So to that end, I've got my two little dolls. We'll bring them back in a moment. I've got my scissors. I have a very small crochet hook, yarn needle. I even have um, some smaller needles with me. This will probably be the needle I use today just because it's kind of a darning size needle. It has a nice big eye that I can get my hyper small thread or uh, yarn through. Um, and it's just a little smaller, it's a little easier to use. So I'll probably be using that today, but uh, yarn needle is always a good thing to have around. The hook I'm using is a C, also known as a 2.75 millimeter hook. So it's pretty small, but it's not so small that you can't really see what you're doing. Like you can see that hook there against my finger. Um, so that's the hook I'm gonna be using. And I'm going to be crocheting with embroidery floss. I'm actually gonna do a couple things today. So I've got my embroidery floss. I've also got a fine, uh, lightweight yarn. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. So this is probably in the one weight category. So this is a size one weight yarn. Um, I think it's Red Heart Twinkle or something. I'm not even sure that they still make this, but it's got like a pretty little twinkle in it, but it's a very lightweight yarn. Um, so size one fingering weight. And this is how it looks compared to an embroidery floss. 
I love crocheting with embroidery floss. So as you can see, it's just the yarn itself is just a smidgen thicker than the actual embroidery floss. So you can use embroidery floss or a lightweight, uh, super lightweight, I guess that's more like a super fine weight, size one yarn, or if you have crochet thread, so like a size three or a size five fashion weight crochet thread, you'll find that's roughly the same size as well. So any one of those will be just fine. It'll, um, if it's a little thicker, you'll have bigger eyes. If it's a little thinner, you'll have smaller eyes. Doesn't really matter because doll eyes can be, you know, any size. And honestly, the bigger the better. So if you've only got like a fine weight yarn, then you can use that. And I can't say that the, um, I can't say that the, the yarn weight is necessarily, well, I should say the fiber isn't really important. So um, when you're dealing with like, I made all these out of acrylic, but if you're doing something really, really tiny, like facial features, you can use wool, acrylic, cotton, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to get into, let's see, I think we're going to do the open eyes first because those ones are kind of fun. I'm going to use blue. I feel like it's really easier to see. So I'm going to use little blue eyes for this little doll here. I'm going to keep him out of the way. And this is really tiny crochet. Mr. and Stitches is fiddling with the tech. How are we doing, Mr. and Stitches? I'm uh, trying to, I'm, I'm playing with some settings, trying to fix your audio. We're getting a lot of reports of echoing. Um, I don't understand why, because we ran a test before we went live and there was a zero echo on all microphones. So this is weird. But anyway, I'm trying. We'll see how it goes. Um, okay. Um, well, no echo. So some, some people, people are reporting it. echo and other people are reporting no echo. Now, I've, I've, I've mixed up some settings, so we'll see if that fixes it. Okay. Well, this is why we, uh, we ask for technical checks and we appreciate the feedback because, like we said, we ran a test uh, before the stream today and everything sounded fine. So, um, I don't know, maybe if there's a difference between uh, going live and just running a test, but um, so it looks like some people can hear it just fine. No echo. You have an echo. I wonder if it has something to do with, with just, I don't know, the internet? Some, some people are reporting echo and other people are reporting no echo. So I'm stumped, but okay. we're just going to go ahead with the show and uh, take it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and address it for next time. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, that's so bizarre. All right. Um, it's, uh, we do now actually have a, a functioning microphone here. So uh, we thought we had addressed kind of the sound from the previous few. Uh, we were hoping that we had because we managed to get ourselves a, a microphone for me so <laughs> um so it shouldn't it shouldn't be echoing um because it's it's um it's not exactly a big room that i'm in <laughs> but we will uh, just press on regardless so here we go we've got uh, i'm going to use this blue embroidery floss and my 2.75 hook or c hook and we're going to start with a sink a cinch circle which is pretty small when you're dealing uh, with embroidery floss, but you just kind of have to, I don't know, accept that it's going to feel a bit funny for a little while and just sort of get comfortable working small. Um, I kind of like working tiny. It always takes me a bit at first, but then I get used to it eventually. So a little cinch circle with the embroidery floss. And these are quick and tiny. I'm going to... Um, sorry, sure. I have to interrupt. Um, we've been getting some gifted memberships, and I just want to shout them out. I, I've been busy fiddling with buttons, but a big thank you to Nico and Lucy for gifting memberships. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Nico and Lucy. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm also not really paying attention to the chat. I've been kind of looking at everything here on the <laughs> craft table. <laughs> but thank you so much. We've got... Who is... Let me just zip through the chat here. We've got... Link, 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 link. It's going backwards, going backwards. Krista has won a membership from Nico, and we've got <laughs> Maeve has won a membership from Lucy. Thank you both so much. Okay, everybody, here we go. Into our little cinch circle, I'm going to single crochet four times. 
Again, this is with my embroidery floss, but if you're using the uh, super fine weight yarn, it's going to look the same way and be relatively the same size. There we go. So that's four single crochet. I'm going to hold that up so you can see it. Four tiny little single crochet all worked into that little cinch circle and over top of that short tail. Now, if you have to make your cinch circle a little bigger just to manage it or have a slightly longer tail, doesn't matter. Pull that tail and cinch it up really, really tight. And then we're going to reach around and join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. So this is tiny work, but there we go. So there it is. That's the first single crochet. And we're going to join with a slip stitch, super tiny. There we go. And now you have a little tiny circle, very, very small. You can snip your thread or your yarn, whatever you're using. Yeah, leave enough yarn to sew it down with. I try to leave around 15 centimeters or six inches ish. And then we're going to fasten off, make sure you're not getting your little short tail wound up in there. When everything is this small, everything is very close together. Big thank you to JC for a $5 super chat. Oh my gosh. It's you. rainy and soggy, a very wet day, a great time to hang out with Jada and crochet. <laughs> thank you so much, JC. We have a, a, an, a, an excellent poem coming from JC to a community post near you soon. <laughs> Um, also we have flipped the camera so that we could like, we've tried some new settings today and we flipped the camera. So Jada looks like she's crocheting left-handed. She's not crocheting left-handed. <laughs> oh, is it showing backwards? It's showing, it's showing the right direction. It's just that it's flipped so that it looks like you're crocheting with your left hand. Ah, I am not crocheting with my left <laughs> we hand. We just want everyone to know she's not doing that. It's the camera. Is there a way to flip it? I'm going to check. <laughs> I, I'll see if I can. Don't mind us, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show live stream, everyone. <laughs> you just never know what's going to go on here. I'd love to say that I was working left-handed. How cool would that be? But I can't, at least not yet. That's not something I've uh, been able to do. I'm just weaving the tail, the short tail, um, into the back of the little tiny eye piece just a couple times just so it doesn't want to unravel and then I'm going to trim whatever's left because I don't really need much there and I know it's not going to want to come undone. So while the mister is fiddling with some settings we'll see if we can get me to look like I normally crochet. There we go. So that's that's just woven in across the back. This is so tiny. So that's the back. I'm woven in the short tail. And that's the front. Looks like a little tiny rosebud. It's so cute. I'm going to trim what's left of that little short tail. There we go. And I'm going to make a second one exactly like it. So that's one. And now I'm going to make a second one. Get my little needle to the side. So again, I'm going to start with a cinch circle. And I'm going to single crochet four times into the circle. Looks like I'm crocheting left-handed, but I'm actually crocheting right-handed. <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> so there's one, two, three, four little single crochets all built into that tiny little circle. And I'm going to cinch my cinch circle up nice and tight reach across to that first little single crochet and I'm going to slip stitch to join. Don't think it's working. Yeah, well, no, it isn't, not quite. The mister is... Nope, still looks left to me. Well, we're just going to go with it for today and uh, we'll do uh, do some more tests next time. So Karen still says she can't hear me. I wonder why. 
wonder what is going on. Okay. I'm I don't understand. We tested it. We we literally tested the stream and we had our own uh, little um, show going and it, everything was perfect. So yeah. I, I'm wondering if it's YouTube, like when you actually go live publicly. I'm not sure what to say. Yeah, but some people can hear me. So that's the other thing I don't fully Make understand. sure your volume is up on your device. Um. I'm just going to weave in a short tail on this one again. Jerry can hear us. Jerry says that the mister is definitely louder, but I'm going to guess that you can hear me. You guys are doing a crochet mystery. <laughs> Tommy says I also sound like I'm in the well. Okay. Low volume. Hmm. Brittany, I'm using a 2.75 millimeter hook. It's also known as a C. It's small, but not, not super small. It's not exactly like steel hook size. All right, so that's just a little bit of weaving with the short tail. I don't need to do much more than that. And I'm gonna carefully trim that. I don't wanna cut my actual loops. There we go. So that's my two little doll eyes. And now all I have to do is sew them on. So. I'm going to continue to use my little, one of my darning needles. I think what I'm going to do is grab this one. So this is a darning needle and it's got a not pointy end. Um, I like using this when I'm sewing things onto crochet or knitting because it's less likely to split my yarn. So I'm going to use that. And make sure they're both facing upright. So there's my two little eyes. I just sort of decide where it is I want them on the doll. Pretty much the second, I want them on the second row of flesh tone down from the hair. So where the hair changed to flesh, there's one row and then there's a second row. So I'm going to put them in right there. And I'm going to sew them down one at a time. So that one I'm just going to hold in place and all I'm doing is grabbing a loop from the doll and I'm going to go right through the side of the eye and make sure nothing moved and then pick up another loop and then the next one. And I'm keeping it more or less on this second row below the hairline. Jerry B has a question. Why didn't you put the eyes on before assembly? Because, great, great question. Um, if I was going to use safety eyes, I might have. Um, but the reason I don't put the eyes on before I've finished assembly is because I'm never entirely sure where my legs are going to wind up. So because the head and the body and the legs are all made in one go, sometimes the legs can end up a little bit twisted. It just depends on the thickness of yarn, uh, maybe where you want to break to put in the pants. And when I put on my arms, I want to make sure like I might like one side of the doll better than the other. So once I get my arms made and est established, like sort of put on, I decide which side of the doll I like better. And I liked this side of the doll better, so this is why I'm putting my face on last. So my face goes on the side of the doll that I like the best. Tanya says she can barely hear me. Um, geez, I really don't want to yell too much, but... <laughs> okay, so I've sewn all the way around my eye. And now I'm going to take my yarn and I'm just going to bring it out uh, in a space somewhere up here and I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to go ahead and sew on the other one.
So that's the right side facing up. I'm going to make sure that I put my doll eye roughly equidistant away from my other eye. That's where I like it. I'm just going to hold it in place and start sewing. Don't worry, Carrie, you didn't miss a whole lot. I'm sorry, I'm just sort of in and out of the chat here, gang. Uh, we've had some technical issues all day, as usual. <laughs> we are working through them at last. Uh, a little bit of new equipment, so uh, bear with us while we get that all sorted out. And um, we'll hopefully be nice and normal and everything will, will run smoothly for the rest of the uh, the rest of the summer schedule because now we know when we're live streaming and uh our the problem is we're getting a complete mixed bag of feedback some some people report absolutely fine others report volume issues others report echo issues but everyone is different so we're like it's going to be almost impossible to solve this yeah i wonder <laughs> i wonder if some of it's actually like the kind of device that you're on i don't know so I'm bringing my needle out through the same place that I brought the other tie out. So my eyes are on and both of the tie, the sewing strings have come out through the same little hole and that is so I can knot them both together. There we go. And then I can just tuck it right back into the head of the doll. And this is how you can easily sew on features and things without necessarily having to worry about doing it before you, you finish all the actual crochet. So I feel like this is pretty easy. Um, you, the other thing you can do is just take your yarn needle and take both those ends and pull them into the body of the doll and then weave them in back here. All I'm doing is just sort of catching the yarn or the, the ties and wiggling my hook back and forth, or in this case my needle, and that just pulls them all the way back down into the body. So there we go. Two little crocheted eyes. So that's the open eye version of the doll. I've used the embroidery floss. They're nice and round, bright blue, and then um, I stitched them on after the whole doll was done, knotted them by bringing both ends out through the same little space, and then pulled that yarn back into the doll. It disappears completely and the eyes are on. And I like making crocheted eyes and sewing them on just because I know they're on firmly. They're not gonna get pulled off. Um, they're not gonna be pulled off and swallowed. So this is a good option for little kids. Um, I also just think it's really cute and it's a nice way to use up embroidery floss if you've got some lying around. So now, Let's make the sleeping or the happy baby doll eye. Um, you can use any yarn you want. I'm going to try this. Um, I don't know if this is dark enough. I might have to go with the darker color. Let's see if I've got any in my big jumbled mess of got a nice dark brown that kind of matches the hair. Got some black too. Black shows up really well. Let's use this. We are going to pull out a length, uh, maybe a little bit more. So let's see here, what have I got? That's about ooh, 24 inches, 60 centimeters worth of embroidery floss. And I'm using black because it'll show up nicely against the lighter colored yarn. And these are the sleeping baby eye dolls. So now what I want is to decide roughly where I want the eyes, which is gonna be the same sort of place that these ones went down. So about the second row down from the hairline. I'm gonna bring my needle in through the top of the head and out at the furthest corner of where I want the first eye to appear. So I'm gonna work on this eye first. I'm gonna leave a little bit of tail at the top for knotting. I'm going to lay my thread across the doll about two stitches wide and then I'm going to bring my needle out above so just a little bit above so it comes out here I put my needle back in over there and I'm bringing it out just a little bit above I'm going to catch 
the thread like that so I get just a little bit of an arc going and then I'm going to put my needle down through the exact same place it just came out and I'm going to bring it out at the corner where I want my other eye to start so about here big thank you to Nico for a membership gift it looks like a sandy one thank you congratulations nico. to sandy and a big thank you to nico for your support thank you to nico and a big thank you to sandy welcome to sandy <laughs> welcome back i guess <laughs> thank you guys so i'm going to do that again over here so my eyes my little eyes are about two stitches wide nice and, and small so the yarn comes out on one corner, you go across two stitches worth to the other corner, bring the needle out just above it. I'm even coming right through sort of some yarn there, doesn't really matter. Just so it kind of matches the other eye. Make sure you catch, I'm going to get this out of the way, make sure you catch the loop like that. Needle goes right back down through the same place and then out where it originally came in. So that's, I'm going to put that right out here in the hairline. You can sort of see my bright needle and then pull. Now, what I want to make sure is to make that a taunt. I want to make the actual eye line kind of taunt. So I pull up on that loop a little bit. And then I tighten it up here and there we go. So both my eyes are now on. They're nice and plain. It looks like the doll's asleep or smiling. And if you felt that the embroidery floss is maybe a little too thin or you wanted something a bit bigger, you could use a thicker weight yarn here. Um, but I like that kind of just sort of suggestion of a doll, a doll eye. Then you just take your two ends like, like, like we did before, knot them together. I'm going to be trimming my thread because I don't need that much. There we go. And I put it back into the body of the doll. So I think I'm just gonna do what I did before where I take my needle, pass it through the doll, pull the tails in. There we go. And then wiggle what's left into the doll. There, done. So now we've got a couple of smiling eyes and a couple of bright open eyes. One's sort of smiling or asleep, the other one's awake. And now we just need a little mouth. I don't usually bother with noses on little dolls like this. I don't really feel like they're necessary. Um, and the smiling mouth is really, really simple. It's basically just the reverse of what we did with the black embroidery floss for the eyes. So I'm gonna do that. I think I'll use this kind of pinky red color I have here. Don't need very much maybe eight inches or 20 centimeters or so. Thread up the yarn needle and decide where you want your mouth. I kind of like it when the corners are even with the center of the eyes. So I'm gonna bring my yarn in from the bottom here. Actually, maybe just, Maybe the same place. Doesn't really matter. It's going to disappear anyway. So I'm going to bring out my needle where I want the corner of the mouth to start. Put the needle back in where I want the other corner of my mouth, which is in direct alignment with sort of the middle of the eye. And then bring my needle out just a little bit below. Catch the thread. And there I've got a little smiling face. Very, very simple. Needle goes back in the same place and then back out the same place that it originally came in. So out the same hole. And then I can kind of uh, pull on both of those strings to make sure I have like a nice, not too tight, but a, a firmly created mouth. There we go. Little smiling face, nice and simple. And then I can knot together my ends. We have a membership 
Uh, we have a membership milestone from Dawn. Hi, Dawn. So happy to be here to learn cute designs. Thank you, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you for being a member. And thank you all for bearing with us while we figure out our new technical setup. <laughs> As usual, you are our favorite pile of guinea pigs. Uh, we did sort it out, we thought, before we got going here today, but... Um, we need a guinea pig emoji. We do need a guinea pig emoji. I yes. think we've talked about this. Maybe. For all the... Uh, I know we have the squirrel, but I think we need to add a guinea pig. I think you're right. Okay. Wiggle, wiggle. There we go. But first, you don't grab it from one direction. Stick your needle in another another sp spot and grab it from another direction. And there's a little face. I've got two eyes and a smiling face. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I've got a brighter pink. I think I might use a brighter pink for the mouth on this one. So, not too much required. Hey Charlie, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. So that would be that was the original post, 11 a.m. Eastern, which is three hours ahead of Pacific. Uh, so that would have been more like eight, I guess. Is that 8 a.m. Pacific? But we got going late um, because we had some quirky stream issues. Um, Apparently, we may still be having some quirky stream issues, depending, I think, on where you are. Yes, for uh, everyone on the West Coast, it will be uh, 8 a.m. on Mondays, right? Yes. 8, 9, 10, 11, that's right. And uh, we have the whole summer ahead of us, gang. We're going to we're gonna. Today was of... a little bit delayed by about 20 minutes or so, yeah. but uh, we're going we're gonna to try to hit 11 Eastern every Monday for at least the summer. Yes. Uh, we should we should have our technical stuff sorted out um, for the next stream for sure. We were excited to get going today with our, our new tech setup. Uh, we've been trying to improve it for quite a while. So um, <laughs> It's funny. Everyone's reporting that I sound really good, and now you're the one that sounds like you're in a well echoing that in a well. That is so bonkers. Which is really bizarre because when we tested the stream not half an hour ago it was everything sounded perfect yeah so it's really bizarre yeah i don't really know what to make of that so i'm just fiddling with the strings i like to keep my little needle handy and sort of pluck out my embroidered bits and then sort of tighten the Um, so that's a very simplistic bit of embroidery. You've got two um, basically like little arches for the eyes and a reverse arch for the mouth. Nice and simple. Remember to bring your yarn in and then back out again through the same space or the same little space between stitches because that way you can knot the ends together and then weave them in. And uh, this is how you do embroidery on top of a completed doll <laughs> without any strings showing. Um, Bobby, who has headphones on, earbuds, can actually hear our little clock ticking. <gasps> Whoa! That is hilarious. Who else can hear our little clock ticking? That's our cuckoo clock. That's our little cuckoo clock from the Black Forest. Yes. We love it. Yes, we love it. So... Bobby's earphones are really good. <laughs> I sound like I'm a down a well, but you can hear the cuckoo clock. <laughs> well, you know what? We got some new equipment. Thanks to everyone supporting our show. We really appreciate it. We got some new microphones and cameras and stuff. And you know how it is when you set up all kinds of new things. The hiccups are crazy. Yes. But we're trying. We'll, we'll get it sorted. 
We will work harder to make sure that it all sounds the way it's supposed to, everybody. We really do want these Monday Lives to sound good and be clear so that regardless of what we're up to, um, you can hear us just fine and you can see what we're up to. We're really excited about this. We absolutely love live um, streaming with you guys because it's a chance to sort of ch check in with you all, to hang out in the chat, do something in real time, kind of get a temperature check on what everybody's up to and the kind of projects you want to do. So uh, we really want to do more of this, which is why we've decided to, to keep sort of the live going uh, once a week throughout the summer. Uh, we're going to aim for every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, if you are wondering how to figure out what time it is in your time zone, all you have to do is go to Google and say, um, compare Eastern time zone to whatever time zone you're in. Or say, you know, like uh, ask if it's, if it's let's say it's 11 o'clock Eastern, what does that mean where I am? And Google will figure it out for you. It's really cool. Um, so you'll always know exactly what time we're going just by Googling it. Um, so a lot of people can hear the clock ticking. <laughs> is it really loud? Like, um, Bobby says we both sound clear in the earbuds. That's great. Okay, so that's the little faces. I was planning on just doing the faces today. Uh, we were going to fiddle around with some hair maybe next time and do some simple clothing. Um, I don't want to get into the clothes today. We're going to do that uh, maybe on the next live stream. But I would love to know from you guys uh, what you're more interested in. Are you interested in sort of fiddling with hairstyles or are you more interested in fiddling with uh, clothing? And we are going to do a poll. Mr. and Stitches is going to set that up while I sip some coffee. Wigglebutt thinks that she needs a slightly darker mouth. You know what? Let's just... I wonder if I can run a little... I'll run a little extra red along it. So I'll leave the pink there, but while we're doing the poll, I'll put in a little extra color. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So in from the top, out to the side, and now of course because I know exactly where it's going, I'll go through the same stitches. It's going to run alongside the pink, which is going to look kind of cute. It's going to look like there's a couple of lips there out through the same place. Don't want to pull too tightly. There we go. So I'm just going to fiddle with my stitches a little bit. There. Knot that together. It's a little more obvious. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kind of like the pink and the red together too. That looks kind of neat. Hey, don't forget to show, I just remembered, uh, don't forget to show everyone the new Fair Isle Style Plus pattern you designed. Oh yeah. It's phenomenal. <clears throat> I will show you that in a moment. I actually have them here on the Jada's, table. Jada's really busy doing all kinds of plus patterns for everyone. We are getting a lot of requests and Jada's working on pretty much all of them. So. Stay, stay tuned. I guess, I guess they'd have to check in on the Etsy shop to see the new stuff. Yes, um, always check the Etsy shop. I also try to do a little community post whenever we got we get one up. I am currently working on. I know it's June. June is graduation month for a lot of folks, um, and I am working on a graduation, a special graduation graph uh, for everybody, which actually created a couple more ideas. So yes, I've got a lot going on here at the craft table. There we go. Much better. Okay. There. So now there's a slightly darker little smile. I like that. That's cute. So slightly darker. Um, obviously, the darker the, the skin tone, um, you, can, you can use either, you need to use darker color than the skin tone to make it show up or even lighter color than the skin tone. Um, you can fiddle around with both, but little things like little mouths aren't super important. To me, a doll's eyes are the most important part. Um, they kind of suggest the, um, not quite the personality, but maybe like the mood of the doll. So I like like the big open eyes. Um, but these ones are really cute too, and they're simple to do. So if you're brand new to Ami Yurubi and you're brand new to making dolls, then that's a really simple little eye to do, and at least puts a little face, a little happy face on your doll. But I invite you to try using the smaller hook 
and the finer weight yarn or embroidery floss and try embroidering a couple of eyes because they look really cute. They're a nice size for the doll. Um, they can be bigger, they can be smaller. It's a, a flexible little pattern. It's just four single crochets into a cinch circle and then joined with a slip stitch and then stitched down to the doll. So nice and simple. That's our faces. Um, I'm going to show you the Fair Isle uh, graphs that I have recently finished that are up in the shop. So let's just get these little guys out of here. I have a sip of my coffee. You can absolutely do two colors for the lips. I think that actually looks really cute. I like that. It worked out really cute. It's like a, it's like a top lip and a bottom lip, you know? All right. What have I got here? Let's see here. Now, um, I think you guys have probably seen um, the baby buggy. So I know it's June. Um, uh, there's a lot of a lot of baby showers and things take place in June, um, and some people were asking for something baby related, so we came up with a little baby buggy. Um, I like it all in one color because it looks kind of like, it's just sort of that, that um, very um, uh, classic kind of image, but if you vary the colors, you can get a really cute little, um, like almost like a pram or a, like that bassinet look. I like that. I was calling that sort of the bassinet because it looks like it's standing on a couple of feet and that's its little hood that goes up and down. So a bassinet or a pram. I really like that. You can make it going one way or the other. It doesn't matter. We've got, um, I love this one, our butterfly. So we made a butterfly graph as well. A lot of people asked for a butterfly and I honestly couldn't decide what kind of a butterfly to do <laughs> did i miss a poll did you ask me to put up a poll yes i missed it yeah yeah if um okay I, what's this what's the poll it's Can for the doll it, please? so the doll is should we do hair or clothing next for the doll so next you mean like the next live stream yeah for the next okay. li like live cow um so that's our we've got a monarch graph and we've got, um, this is a Morpho Blue. It's a gorgeous butterfly, I love it. It's got like two tones, but of course you can completely fiddle with all of the colors um, and the shapes. We have a members only version for the Silk and Vicuña members of this pattern um, up on the web page. So if you're a Silk or Vicuña member, be sure to check out the website, um, our web page for our Silk and Vicuña members. We have a, a pattern for the butterfly that also includes a design your own butterfly graph in it. Uh, if you're brand new to membership or you haven't been in in a while, we'll make sure we post the um, membership access information in a community post after today's live stream for you. So stay tuned for that. So those two are included in the uh, pattern in the Etsy shop along with this one. This is just a regular butterfly um, I love this one. This is like kind of what I think of as a classic butterfly. You've got your sort of butterfly shape and you've got just sort of some simple coloring up in the in the uh, wings. Um, a big thank you to everybody who's picked up a copy of this pattern and has sent me photos already of your version of butterflies. Can I just say the next post uh, that we start doing for the community. So when we, we get close to July, I like posting everybody's uh, progress. And there are some butterfly samplers coming your way in that post that are going to knock your socks off. I am just delighted what people do with colors and this pattern is so pretty. So there's a lot of things you can do um, with our little butterfly, uh, Fair Isle butterfly pattern. I just love that. It's uh, We didn't include it as a regular one in the tutorial because there's just so many colors involved with it. I didn't really see a way to make it um, just a solid color. And I am trying to stick to basically an A and a B throughout the entire regular Fair Isle project because I know a lot of you are, you know, uh, keeping an eye on your yarn usage. I wanted to go for a really um, kind of plain, just two color, you know, where you only carry one, you use the other as a main, just to kind of keep things simple. But um, if you're comfortable switching colors, then you can totally start getting wild with your use of color. So that's the butterflies. And we have one more. Um, this is for all of our American friends. Uh, we had a lot of requests to do a Stars and Stripes or an American flag graph. I love this. This one's beautiful, but I love the American flag. It's so pretty. Um, and we are working on a few other flag designs. <laughs> like I said, I've been kind of crazy busy around here. But I love this. This was a, a, a much requested one. 
because a lot of uh, a lot of the people who watch this show are in the states, and I know that your Fourth of July is coming up. And if you wanted to include a little celebratory flag in your fair owl blanket, then uh, here it is. Now, um, this pattern is also available in the Etsy shop. It works a little differently. Um, than Keep some in of the mind, other you're seeing it in reverse because of our terrible camera. Thank you. <laughs> I flip it over. We're gonna fix that. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, flipped over. And thank you, Nico, for gifting another membership. Thank you so much, Teresa. And, and a big thank you to Jin for joining our our crochet family. Welcome, Jin. Welcome to Alpaca. Yeah, so there I go. I flipped it. You can see you can see it going the other way. Um, we're we're working with too many new too many new tech devices today. Yes, we too have many an awful new lot. ones. Uh, if I <laughs> if I look at it the way I built it, it it looks correct. But um, I'll flip it just so you can see what it looks like on the other side. Um, this is built a little differently than some of the other ones. You're, there every other row, you don't have to uh, carry um, the bee yarn. So it's a little bit different, um, but it not that said, it's not difficult to do, and I just think it looks so cool. This graph was really built for the American flag. I love it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, that's also available in our Etsy shop, and a big thank you to the few of you who have picked it up so far. I really appreciate it. I know uh, some things are special requests, um, and if we figure that they're going to have mass peel, then we, we try to get them up into the shop a little sooner than... Um, some of the other ones and I know I know that the we get requests every year to do American flag related things um, At this point, I'm more I'm more familiar with designing American flag related things than I am my own flag <laughs> But I have to say the Canadian flag is not easy Why did they have to go and stick the most complicated leaf in the middle of it? I just drive me nuts <laughs> But there you go. Those are the new um, Fair Isle patterns that we have in our shop and uh, how's that post coming, Mr. and Stitches? Our, our little poll. I will check right now. We've got some votes. Let me see what we have. We have 55 votes. Uh, should I end it? Yes. Okay. So last chance uh, um, to cast your vote. I'll leave it for 10 seconds, and then I will end the, end the uh, recent poll. Super. Krista, I am working on a Canadian flag graph. Um, obviously, <laughs> I kind of have to. That would be very unpatriotic of me if I didn't. <laughs> um, but I have to say that that uh, that middle that middle leaf is really giving me the gears. So uh, I'm working on it though. I'm gonna see what we can come up with. And uh, we will end the poll. We'll figure out what we're doing in our next live uh, with that. So we're going to finish, we're going to wrap up the dolls relatively soon in the next, uh, so hair for the dolls, 60% clothing for the dolls, 40. Okay, so the next live we do, we'll work on the hair. Um, there are no explicit hair instructions in our Baby Dolls of the World ebook um, because we never really included hair. Uh, this is This is about as much hair as the Baby Dolls get. Normally, in my mind, baby dolls, babies don't usually have a whole lot of hair, maybe just enough to kind of cover their head like this little guy. Um, but they don't usually have like, you know, full on ponytails or anything. So that will be new. We'll be adding that um, kind of as we go next Monday. We'll be experimenting with hair. I have some ideas. I've, I've built other dolls before, so I kind of have some idea of, of how to add some cute little simple hairstyles. We're always going for simple here. Simplistic is fun. And I just wanted to draw your attention to this little guy. So a couple live streams ago when we were talking about having built the doll, um, I said if you had different textured yarns, you might want to give it a try for the hair. This yarn here that I used on this little guy is a different sort of texture from what I normally do. And I'm going to show it to you. It's this. It's kind of a little bit, <clears throat> it's still acrylic, and it's still kind of soft, but it's a bit, I want to say, almost nubby. We got a uh, big shout out to Connie for gifting a membership. Thank you so much, Connie. Thank you, Connie. And uh, looks like the big winner is Claire. <laughs> Welcome back, Claire. And thank you so much, Connie. Yeah, so this is a slightly textured, I would say, acrylic yarn. Um, bit of the usual stuff that's smooth. And I thought I would try it out for this little guy's hair. I like the way it feels. Um, sometimes making toys is a lot about feel and not just about visuals. Um, but it also looks kind of like neat hair. Um, so that 
is nice short hair for a boy. Um, I'm probably going to put ponytails on this little doll and turn this little doll from looking kind of boyish into looking a little more girlish. Um, I'm going to try a ponytail on, on uh, this doll on Monday next week. But this Friday, we will have one of our regular scheduled Friday videos. So um, that way we know that the sound is fine <laughs> and the visuals are fine. And oh, and let's let everyone know from um, we've gone, we've we've reset all of our thumbnails to help everyone out. Um, anything that we do that was a live stream, it's going to say filmed live on the thumbnail. Yes. Anything that does not say filmed live on the thumbnail is going to be a standard tutorial and or uh, vlog that Jada does. Yes. Just so everyone knows. Yeah. Um, and so if you need a visual to figure out if it was a live stream or if it's just a regular tutorial, it'll say right on the thumbnail. It'll say filmed live. Uh, so there'll be no more confusion, hopefully, about what's a live, what's an old live, what was streamed, and what's an actual video. Um, but for the foreseeable future, for the summer anyway, our schedule is going to be Mondays are a live event, whether it's a live crochet along or something else, it will be live, 11 o'clock, barring any unforeseen issues, <laughs> Eastern. And Fridays will be our regular video, so not filmed live, it'll just be a video, it'll be a tutorial most likely, maybe the odd little vlog, uh, but it'll be a video that will also be at 11 a.m. in the morning, it's our standard Friday upload. Um, and that is hopefully how our summer is going to roll out ahead of us. As usual, please leave your comments and your questions and your suggestions in the comment section. Uh, pop into our Etsy shop at any time to message us because that's private and uh, we love hearing from you guys. If you've got pictures that you'd love us to share with the rest of the community, you can share them with us in our Etsy shop just by clicking on message seller. And then the little emoji, there's like a, a landscape emoji or it might be a little camera icon. It depends on the software you're using. Um, but that will let you upload or take a photograph and you can send that to us. If it's okay for us to share your photos, please let us know. Please say safe to share or okay to share um, because we don't ever want to share anything that nobody intended us to do that. Uh, we are very mindful of people's privacy. <laughs> and um, that should be that for our first Monday live stream of our summer schedule 2023. We hope you guys all enjoyed hanging out with us. Thank you so much for being decent little ba guinea pigs. <laughs> we are sorting out the tech stuff. We do have some new things. So um, hopefully next Monday, everything will sound crystal clear. Um, I do like how the visual looks. I feel like you can really see, um, you can sort of see what we're up to here. We'll experiment a little bit more with uh, lighting and sound. And um, hopefully <clears throat> next Monday, everything will be A-OK. -okay. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything you would like to add? Um, let me think. I think I said everything. I just want to thank everyone for supporting our show. Um, it, it does allow us to kind of upgrade stuff. Mm -hmm. We're trying. The tech, the tech stuff is tricky because... Um, there's so much software and then you have to rely on the internet connection and then you have to rely on YouTube and your um, web hoster. So that part's tricky, but we're doing our best. But thank you so much, everyone, for supporting us. Um, the best way to support us is to either become a member or buy a pattern in our Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. And um, if you watch our videos, just um, click the like button. That is great too. And I think that's it. Um, the dolls look amazing. They're super, super, super cute. They're cute. I love the little the little guy with the green uh, green shirt. Yeah. <laughs> He's so cute. And um, just a repeat of our summer schedule. Mondays will be a live stream. Um, crochet along or whatever else, possibly something else. And then Fridays will be our standard traditional classic video which is most likely a uh tutorial but sometimes it might be a uh, something else yes i think that's it that's i think it. we covered all that great well everyone thank you again for joining us today um we will sort out the tech issues i hope one little tech issue at a time just sort of like how you take life <laughs> and we will see you friday here uh, for a regularly scheduled video, 11 a.m. Friday morning, uh, Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern. And like I said, you can always Google uh, the time zone changes 
um, and that will tell you exactly what time it is where you are. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay crafty. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, and we will see you really soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. See you Friday.